The group of roller coaster enthusiasts, known as American Coaster Enthusiasts, or ACE for short, have awarded many roller coasters over the years with landmark status as determined by ACE themselves. As of January 2020, 43 coasters have been granted the ACE roller coaster landmark status. Before jumping into this, I will note that it is important to distinguish ACE landmarks from Ace Coaster Classics, which is entirely different. Ace Coaster Classics are determined by a very strict set of guidelines pertaining to restraints and headrests use, among other specific things, and many coasters over the years that have been awarded with classic status have been rescinded due to parks changing their restraints on these classic rides. Today, however, I want to discuss a few coasters that I think could potentially be awarded the Ace Roller Coaster Landmark status in the next few years or so due to their historical significance and impact on the industry. Millennium Force doesn't really need any introduction to coaster enthusiasts. Opening in 2000 at Cedar Point, this was the world's first full circuit roller coaster to break the 300 foot barrier and was designed by the world renowned Intamin Amusement Rides. Millennium Force was one of the most significant additions during the original Coaster Wars, which actually originated around the time Magnum XL200, also at Cedar Point, opened in 1989. Magnum XL200 actually has been designated as an ace roller coaster landmark for quite a few years now, and in my mind, Millennium Force is certainly the top contender for one of the next landmark designees, due to its huge impact on the industry and how it changed things for roller coasters around the world. This is actually the ride that gave me the idea for this video, as I began to think about what coasters from around this time period may begin to be officially recognized for their historical significance in the future. The next coaster here, another one I immediately think of, is New Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas. This is much newer, opening in 2011, so it may be quite some time before we see something like this recognized, but this was Rocky Mount Construction's first roller coaster and famously introduced us to the now very common concept of the iBox conversion, retrofitting older wooden coasters that haven't aged well and are very dull into some of the best steel tracked roller coasters ever built. Of course, this innovation is directly responsible for rides such as Colmar Harden's Wildfire, Dollywood's Lightning Rod, and of course Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point just to name a few. RMC has completely changed the landscape of the roller coaster industry over the last 9 years and has forced many of their competitors to drastically up their game in order to compete and thrive. The Voyage is a huge Gravity Group wooden coaster that opened at Holiday World in 2006. It is the second longest wooden roller coaster in the world, right behind The Beast, which is an ace landmark itself. Why do I think the Voyage could potentially be recognized as a landmark by Ace? Well, it cemented Gravity Group as a new, premier manufacturer of wooden roller coasters, and the Voyage, I believe, is a revolutionary wooden roller coaster itself. Tons of airtime moments, brilliant use of the hill it sits on, and features many 90 degree bank turns, which was a first for wooden roller coasters at the time. Furthermore, ever since its introduction, wooden roller coasters have been measured up against the Voyage. In my mind, all of these things make for a future landmark designation. Voyage is a true, untamed, out of control wooden coaster experience unlike any other. X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain in Valencia, California, known as X from 2002 until 2007, is the last ever roller coaster manufactured by Aerodynamics. It is also the first ever fourth dimension roller coaster, meaning it features winged seats on the side of the track which also spin forwards and backwards in a controlled spin by means of a rack and pinion system. Despite Aero going bankrupt before even completing construction of this ride, SNS would manufacture and construct two more of these fourth dimension models known as Ajaneka and Dinaconda. Furthermore, these extreme fourth dimension coasters would influence the now very common cloned models by SNS known as 40 free spins commonly found at many Six Flags parks. X2 brought a truly revolutionary concept in roller coaster technology to the world and still stands as a testament to the legacy of aerodynamics and how revolutionary they were for the time. Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City is the newest coaster I have featured here on this list and this was a bit of a hard one for me to decide as one of the contenders. First of all, it did open in 2013, so it is not very old and likely won't be designated for quite some time yet. However, Outlaw Run is the first wooden roller coaster to successfully invert riders and it features more than one inversion as well. It was also the first topper track coaster by RMC as well as their first ground up coaster. With all of the new possibilities this introduces to wooden roller coasters, this has led to great innovation in the industry and other companies have introduced new types of track very similar to RMC. 
The same year Outlaw Run opened, Gravity Group gave an overhaul to their original coaster Hades at Mount Olympus and transformed it into Hades 360, adding a corkscrew in place of the turnaround. We have also seen Great Coasters International introduce inverted elements on their rides as well. So we are seeing these very well-established, reputable coaster manufacturers following in the footsteps of RMC and introducing newer elements into their traditional wooden coasters. I believe that Outlaw Run is a very influential ride for the industry, and despite not being the original RMC, I think it holds its own in terms of influence with New Texas Giant. Let me know what you guys think about Outlaw Run potentially being recognized as an ace roller coaster landmark. Also, let me know if you agree with my choices, and let me know if there are any other coasters that you think could be recognized by Ace as a future roller coaster landmark. To wrap things up here, I feel it is important to say that I currently am not a member and haven't held a membership with American Coaster Enthusiasts at any point up to this recording, and I do not know exactly what the responsible members are looking for when designating a new roller coaster landmark. This list is purely speculative, and I tried to look at rides I find to be very influential to the industry and that I believe the powers that be at Ace would find to be fit for this title. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more similar amusement park and roller coaster related videos, Videos, be sure to subscribe, like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook, and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. Thank you for watching. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.